um, I give you guys a lot of kudos for actually coming because most traders that are out there working at their trading really do not believe that the stuff that we're going to be talking about today is pertinent to them. That they don't believe that the mental part of trading is as important as the mechanical part. So as I mentioned in the email, it it uh, it is not going to be surprising to me that we see a, a a bit lower turnout for this event than we do for other events where we're showing our trading system and our trading indicators and all of that. People are very interested and involved in that because it's, uh, you know, they, that's what they can see, you know. It, it, uh, it's what got them interested in trading to begin with and it's what they want to believe that trading is all about. Okay. Yeah, Adam, it is being recorded, and uh, we will send out a recording either late tonight or first part of uh, first sometime tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So, um, kudos to you guys for coming, uh, and I and I appreciate it. This is my favorite kind of event to do. Uh, because this is the kind of event that I wish that I had when I was struggling to trade, okay? Just so you know, if you're here expecting to hear me talk, talking about trade setups and how to make a lot of money and how to crush the market and indicators and technical analysis, that's not this event, okay? If you get antsy and you don't want to sit around waiting for me to talk about the more important parts of trading, then you probably want to just watch this on video and fast or whatever you want to do or not watch it at all because this is not going to be about the mechanics of trading. I often uh, talk about that and, and to me, you know, after I've been through what I've been through, I have realized that the mechanics of trading is really about what, about 80%, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, it's about 20% of what you need to know. It's the easy part. It's the fun part. It's the indicators and the charts and the extra monitors and the trading platform and all of the stuff. That's fun. That's the exciting part of trading. The other 80% is so much fun, and it's what people struggle with the most. So they want to avoid it. Okay, they don't want to be accountable. So they they, they put all the accountability on the indicators or the trading system or the trade room moderator or whatever. But here's the secret, folks. You guys already have what it takes to be a successful trader. You already have it. You just need to know how to use it or be given instructions on, on how to transition over to using it. And this is what I'm going to talk about today, okay? This is really different than what you may have heard anybody else talk about. But I've been talking about this for a lot of years, and a lot of people have benefited from this, from this talk, okay? All right, so uh, we're going to get started. This is our, we're, we're into our 10th year of doing this. So obviously we're doing something right. Um, here's a little, uh, a little plug for something else. Um, so Connor and I, Connor's my son. He's also here with us. He's my right hand man and an awesome trader himself. Um, Connor and I filmed an episode of Shark Tank in September. And uh, it's actually going to air Sunday, March 3rd. So mark your calendars, set your recorders. 
we're going to be on Shark Tank, so uh, <laughs> that is a picture of me, by the way. All right, so let's let's move on. Um, so today we're going to talk about trading like it's your business, and not just like it's a business, side business, or you know, a, a little craft hobby thing. This is your main business, okay? This is what I want you to try to get your brain around. If you haven't seen success in your trading, you're probably not approaching it right, okay? And I and I figured this out uh, after doing some introspection, okay? So again, this is a learning event about the other 80% of trading, okay? This is not going to be about indicators and setups and technical analysis, okay? Just so you guys are clear on that and you don't got, start getting antsy and expecting me to do the fun stuff. Me, this is fun if I have somebody's attention and they're willing to listen and understand what I'm talking about. If you want to know about those things, Jot these down. Connor's going to be in there for you, or if you're watching it on video, down these these URLs. And there's information here about what we do. Okay, so the first one is a series of videos about what we do. It's only about 30 minutes long, but we've broken it up into little bite-sized chunks. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. The other link is to uh, a whole bunch of, Connor actually put up another one today. Um, it's to the, uh, our trade of the day video series. And, and uh, if you watch a few of those, you'll get a really good idea of what we do. In those videos, I talk about the trades uh, before they happen. You know, I tell you what I'm looking at. I tell you what I'm going to do. I tell you when I'm going to do it. I tell you what I've done. And then I tell you the result at the end. Okay? That's how. That's our, what happens in our trade room. Okay? We have a number of our trade room traders are here with us today. And uh, they can testify to the fact that, yeah, this is, this is, this is the way it's done. And this is what you're going to see on the videos. These are not dubbed over after the fact. <clears throat> I caught, well. Somebody told me they caught a guy dubbing, overdubbing a, a, a live trade after the trade. <laughs> anyway, different story. Okay, so what we're talking about today. <clears throat> we had a program that was a the best trader training program or an educational program that was out there. The problem is is that it's a one on one mentoring program and that program requires an awful lot of time. Requires a lot of time on the part which I don't care about, but more importantly it required a lot of time on my part and on the other mentors. And at the time Lisa and Praveen and we had a couple other mentors that would mentor other traders very time consuming. So we pretty much phased it out, although it never technically went away. We phased it out. What you're going to be hearing today is, is part of that program. The, the, the information that I uh, am going to uh, uh, impart to you guys came about as I was developing this program. <clears throat> now, that being said, I'm resurrecting this program in a, a, a bit of a different form so that it doesn't require as much of my time and I, and I can do more for more people in less time. So this is going to be the Trader RX 2.0 that I'm working on now. It will, it will come to light in the next few weeks. All of our people that are in the Einstein program and our VIPs, will get this program for free. It will be part of the Einstein program or package. 
part of our, our and our existing VIP. Einstein and VIP is the same thing. Okay, uh, it's just been renamed, relabeled. All right, so that's coming. Yeah, I thought you'd like that, Graham. I still, uh, um, I still plan on sending an email out to you guys, uh, you VIPs and Einsteiners, later this with more information. So I'll get, I'll get to that this week. Yeah, and I'm gonna need to talk to you some too, Alex, and find out what worked and what didn't work. Um, Alex uh, kind of uh, teamed up with a guy, and they were mentoring each other, and uh, I was kind of watching from a distance, and that worked out really well. This was a long time ago, though. Alex been around for a long time. All right, so my history. All right, let's. This is where I came from, right? I was. I started out trying to trade for seven years as the world's worst trader. I hold the title of the world's worst trader. And you'll notice that I sat around feeling stupid and all I ever thought about was money and money and money and money. All right, so... I became pretty much lived and beaten down and noticed, you know, all I thought about was losing money and my need for money. And ultimately, I decided, you know, I'm ready to quit. You know, I don't have any more money left. And it was interesting because I had a, uh, an epiphany that money was the core of my problem and my focus on money. That will be discussed at another time in a VIP Einstein session, okay? So I had the opportunity to actually ask myself a specific question, okay? Sometimes the questions we ask ourselves are kind of complicated. You know, the question may not even occur to us to ask, but the answer to the question is really simple, and that's exactly what happened to me. So I took to this trading, and now I was ready to get back to work. I had a clear path with this very simple answer to this what seems like a simple question. So here's the question. Why is it that I can be so successful at running my businesses, yet so unsuccessful at trading? At the time, I was a contractor. And I was, uh, and I owned a couple of hot stores, hot tub stores, um, and everything was great, uh, and I was very good at it. But I couldn't trade my way out of a paper bag, and I suddenly had the <laughs> this epiphany because you don't trade the same way. You run your business. It was a. It's the most simple answer. I'm not approaching it the same way. So I'm thinking, what if I do? What if I trade as if it was a business, my own business, and I approached it the same way that I approached my other businesses, and that is. Do everything you can to keep that business from failing. It must not fail. That's a different mindset. About an hour. Must not fail. Okay? So, now I'm, I'm telling you guys, tra you know, the whole of this is trade like it's a business. But a lot of you have a lot of reasons not to start your own business, especially a trading business. Seems kind of counterintuitive to start a trading business when you, you don't know how to trade yet, when you're not successful yet, when you're not consistent yet, when you don't even consider yourself a real trader yet, 
why in the world would you start a trading business? Or maybe you're just above it. Maybe you don't think it's necessary. You trigger. You just need the right technical indicators. You just need the right trading guru to tell you, you know, when the setups occur. Maybe you just need that special auto trader program that's going to do all the work for you. So it's not necessary to really own your own trading business. What if you're just maybe completely clueless about running a business, which I expect that a lot of you only because you never have and it's never really felt like part of who you are you know you've always kind of felt like you know you wanted the security of having a, a job a company to work for uh, of not being the one making the hard decisions of being in charge um, run uh, small businesses my entire life I see the beauty in some of that how about you're just too busy I, we're all really busy, and the whole idea of you know try you've got a full time job now you've got kids, wife, family, uh, a house, uh, and now you're thinking a business too. There's no way I could handle that. Of course, fear of the unknown is a big one too. You know, the, the losing the, of a paycheck and insurance and uh, a place to go every day um, and uh, uh, somebody's bigger uh, bankroll, you know, it's their responsibility. So the, it's the fear of the unknown. But more than likely, it never occurred to you because this may be the first time that you've heard somebody suggest something like this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you uh, some reasons, or I'm going to tell you some reasons you need to start your own trading business, okay? First and foremost, nobody is more dedicated to success than a small business owner. For example, when I was running my, and I've used this, uh, those of you that are in our VIP program, our, our Einstein and we have our weekly mentoring sessions I've, I've talked about this a lot um, but I was a uh, remodeling contractor and I was one of these hand kind of remodeling contractors I spent a lot of time out in the field with the crews um, I'd spend a couple hours each day with each crew with a tool belt on doing the work and going from job site to job site making sure everything was good making sure the customers are happy do all that and at the end of the day long hard day my crews would pack up and go home. I would pack up. I'd go home, jump in the shower, and my wife would often give me dinner in the shower, and I would get dressed, jump back in my truck, and go out and do and meet with customers uh, and prospective clients uh, all evening long, come back home, work until midnight at my desk, working on whatever it was I was doing, and then get up in the morning and do it all over again. I felt a responsibility <clears throat> to my business, to my customers, to my family, to my um, uh, employees, my subcontractors, my suppliers. I felt responsible to all of them. So I, I became very dedicated to the success of my business for that reason. When you're dedicated to the success of the business, your focus away from how much money you're making from minute to minute to minute or not making or lost, and instead your focus shifts on doing a good job so you get paid. Okay? That's very different. Ultimately, money is involved. But on a day-to-day -day basis, and ask yourself this, I mean, we all have had jobs and professions. When you show up at work, do you fill out a form and go, yeah, if I fill out this form, I make $7. Okay, if I, you know, if, if I uh, fly this airplane, I'm going to get, you know, $200. If I do this and that and whatever, I'm going to get this much money. And you spend your days, the entire day is thinking about, well, I'm going to do this part of my job because then I make money. Probably not, right? 
you probably would approach your days that way. Isn't it interesting that we all approach trading that way? Every tick is money. Everything we're thinking about is about money. Everything revolves around money because it's right there. It's on our domes, right? Uh, or it's on our chart trader or however you trade. Trading is about money. So that's what your job is. And you think that's what the focus of your job should be. In business, there's a div So, for example, I would never, and I can't remember ever, having my bookkeeper up site cutting a piece of wood. Nor did I ever have uh, one of my new hires that was a laborer out training people on how to build a, a project. Or... Uh, or have my lead carpenter um, uh, doing my accounting or ordering t-shirts, you know, for the crews or whatever. There was a division of labor. Everybody knew what they were responsible for, and they did their jobs when they showed up to do their job each day. And if they didn't do that job that was within their job description, then they don't get to come back. Right? So I'm going to use that term job description. I want you to think about as I'm talking here, and I talk about job description, think about how a trade plan might be used as a job description. Okay? I'm going to work up to that. Certainly, you're going to learn a lot more about planning and record keeping. Okay? Here's what I think is, is probably the most important part, along with the first one. You're going to earn qualities that you may not have now by running your own small business. You're going to be learn how devoted you can be to something. You're going to learn how to sacrifice for things to make sure that that business is successful, you're going to learn dedication and determination. You may become more driven than you've ever been before. And on the flip side, you're going to have to also learn patience and learn how to deal with obstacles. And definitely learn how to get better at planning. Okay? So what we're talking about here is part of our AHA sessions that we have every Wednesday. This is our mentoring sessions for our VIPs and our Einsteins. This is one part of it. There's, there's actually 30 parts to it. It's a 30-week uh, thing that we go through. And planning is what comes after uh, the, tr the uh, learning to trade as a business. We have four sessions, four different sessions about planning and how to plan for your trading business. So a lot of us spend some time daydreaming. A lot of time it's at work. You're sitting at your desk or you're sitting in traffic and you're thinking, you know, if I had my own business, if only I had my own business. So a lot of us do have, even though a lot of us don't, a lot of us do. But why? Why do we want to have our own business? Why would somebody want to start a business? Well, it's easy when, you, when you've had a tough day and uh, the boss has been yelling at you all day or you did something stupid or you let somebody down or you, um, you just don't get along and it doesn't seem like no matter what you do, somebody's coming down on you, whether it's a boss or whatever. And so... You work really hard and you feel like other people are profiting for that hard work. Wouldn't it be nice if everything you did, you did for yourself? Or the freedom or perceived that you feel, you know, no more sitting in traffic. No more, you know, racing to get to work before you get docked. You know, you get 
your pay doc for being late again. Um, there's a lot of freedom that comes with being able to call the shot and say, you know what, I'm not going to work today. Or, you know, I think I'll work this weekend. I'm going to Wednesday and Thursday and Friday off and take a long, long extended weekend. You know, you, you do have that freedom to make those kinds of calls. A lot of us are just looking for a new challenge so that we can have better job satisfaction, you know? How many times can you do the same thing day in and day out over and over and over again? So we're looking for potentially some job satisfaction by running our own business. Um, maybe you have a particular passion. You like collecting and you want to you want to start a business for collectors of certain things or, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, maybe you like working out, so you want to start a business being a personal trainer, or you like uh, photography, so you want to start, you want to be a photographer or in music, so you're thinking of being you know, a professional uh, piano player at a bar or something. You know, you want maybe you have this passion and you want it, you love it so to turn it into a business. But a big is that the potential for unlimited income. Right? If you do it right and you work hard, what are the what are the limits to your income? And and uh, you know, having your own business means that you you don't have that person ahead of you that has to get fired or promoted before you can move up in the company. So let's look at that, the cost of a typical business. Now, I'm going to be fair with you um, or honest with you. These numbers are from probably 25, 30 years ago, okay? So they're going to be really low. But these numbers are typical costs, and these are costs that I used. Uh, and I went and I just kind of looked up a few things when I, the, when I first started talking about this to people. I went and looked up what it costs to open my second hot tub store, okay? And these costs are very low. Uh, but they, they're they low because they're dated, but they were actually low at the time because I didn't want to just freak people out. So these are really low. So let's look at startup costs, you know, and I'm not going to read all these off to you. But these are exceptionally low low startup costs. So let's say to start a typical business, you're going to spend over 50 grand just to get started. Then, of course, we're going to have monthly expenses for this business. All right. So this would not be uncommon to have, and this, this was actually my break even. I talk about this often. It's, it's 20,000 dollars a month was a break even I had to profit over and above 20,000 a month to make any money now let's doing this we're thinking of opening this business because we want to generate 150 grand a, a year running your own business okay so you see these startup costs and let's say the first six months in business you're going to be looking at over 175,000 is probably close to 250 in costs over the first six months. Now you're not expected to make any money in the first six months, and this does not include any owner salary. Okay, these are just straight up costs. Wonder more people dream about starting a business than actually start a business, okay? No wonder it's so scary. Well, let's look at the typical trading business costs and see if we can rationalize a different kind of business for the same potential, okay? So we have our Einstein program. I've referred to it several times here. And uh, that's 5856. And then you're going to need a computer, an extra monitor, uh, uh, internet equipment, 
and a couple thousand dollars to start a trading account. So your cost, even though 2000 of it is still your money, because uh, it's just in your trading account, will count it as lost money because you're going to have to practice. You're probably going to lose a little bit. But your cost to get started are $8,600-ish. And then if you have your monthly expenses, because you're probably going to do it from home. And so you're looking at maybe 75 bucks a month, maybe 100 So we're looking at less than $10,000 for that first six months, or about 5% of the cost of conventional business to potentially earn the same $150,000 a year or more. Okay? So I do this just to show you, you know, there is some more logic in this. I'm not suggesting you go out for business because that is hugely expensive and just as risky. So here's what I want you to do, and here's a takeaway. This is a uh, and and there's a, a few takeaways. And this is what I want. This is, I, I came to all of this to do this. Okay, I start. I said all that to come to this. I want you guys now to decide. All right, I'm going to start a trading business today. I want you all to do this. And I know some of you already have because you're already VIPs or Einsteiners. And you've already done this, so good for you guys, and you're well on your way. I want you to make it tangible. Okay? The very first thing, I've started a number of businesses in my professional life. And it always starts with a dream first, and then the first thing you do is you name the business what would I call this business and this is kind of fun so create a business name once you've done that you've it in your mind something tangible something that exists something that you can actually point to and refer to instead of it being you know, that trading thing that I keep trying to do. No, this is a company. This is a business. Go so far as to maybe a logo to attach to that name and maybe even some business cards. Now, let's make it even more real. And this isn't just for fun. Okay? Okay. There's a reason behind this. We're going to talk about this on Thursday. But I want you to go open a business bank account in your trading business name. This is very important. Okay? Now, depending on your, you know, your municipality laws where you are there, you may apply for a business license or, or some sort of a corporate entity. So you're going to do all of this, and you're going to get all of this set up in your business name. Now, the next time someone asks you what you do, what are you going to answer? What are you going to say? When people come up and ask me what I do, I don't hesitate. I I have I have an answer. What's your answer now after doing all of this and somebody comes up and says, Glenn, what do you do? Tom, what do you do? I'm a trader. I have a day trading business. Do you have to be a successful trader to have a day trading business? <laughs> that too. 
That's one part of your business. That's one hat that you wear, Matt. No, Tom. No, no, no. That's not what you do. You have a trading business. They don't give a crap that you're learning what you're learning how to do. You have a day trading business. You identify yourself as a day trader with a day trading business, a business owner. You've got to make it real because the next things I'm going to have you do on Thursday. Um, hold on just a second. Oh, yeah, that is on Thursday. I was thinking it was today. I'm looking down my list here of things that we're going to talk about. So the next thing I'm going to have you do is to kind of play some little games with yourself. And it's not as hard as it sounds, okay? Because I'm going to ask you to tap into some emotions that aren't necessarily related to trading, but are related to working at a company, to being responsible, to being accountable. That's a problem a lot of you guys don't have, and that is you're not accountable to anybody or anything for your trade decision. Now, you can say, yeah, I'm accountable to my wife because she's sick of me losing money. And she's always on, you know, losing money and, and when am I going to make money and the amount of time I spend at this and all that. So sure. You're accountable in a guilty way. But let's be, count, be accountable because it's the right thing to do. Okay, Let's be accountable the way you're accountable at work, the way you're accountable to teammates, the way you're accountable to uh, your customers, and you're accountable to your boss. All right? So you understand? So this is what we're going to talk about next week. And I, I'm sorry, not next week. On Thursday. Thursday is a really, it's going to be a lot more takeaways than today. Today I wanted you to get your brain kind of around all of this. So on Thursday we're going to, we're going to talk about a few things. And the first question that I have, and I want you to think about this. If I hired you to work for my trading company, would I be forced to fire you? Okay, now see how that, I've introduced an, a, a different emotion than what you've typically been associating with trading, right? Because now it's just not about getting fired and not making a paycheck. It's about being thought less, you know, being fired because you were incapable uh, well, I don't know about you. I have a bit of an ego. And I would hope that you would too. And that being fired from a job would be a huge blow to your ego. So you're going to want to try to avoid that at all costs. So we're going to talk about that on Thursday. We're going to talk about the actual process of setting up your business, how to go about doing that, how to go about making each department accountable to each other. Now, you've heard me talk about this the whole time, and you're thinking, this is just kind of pretend. You know, I'm going to pretend. And all, although there is some of that, this, You've got to approach it like you are a business. You've got to be a business. I'm going to show you what you need to do to be a business. I'm going to show you how to, I talked about accountability. I talk about it a lot. 
you guys are all lacking accountability. Which, by the way, if we go back to um, we go back to this, this is all about accountability. Okay, so this is going to be really good for those of you lacking accountability. That's where you're going to you're going to start to get it again. So you're going to learn how to keep your business accountable to you and your family. Now, transition plan. So you've all come into trading with this idea, okay? So here was my trade plan or my, my plan when I started trading. My plan was, there's a three-step, well-thought-out plan, okay? My plan was learn to trade, sell my businesses, quit my jobs, trade full time. Anybody else has a more detailed plan than that? That was pretty much it. I actually had no idea what that was going to look like. To go from being a, and I ran my business for over 20 years, so it became just a regular job. I, I got a paycheck, you know, I, I was on salary, so I got a paycheck, and and uh, and it was a, you know, every paycheck to paycheck type of thing. My uh, business paid insurance and all of that back in the good old days, right, where we still complained about it, but man, it was totally different. So the business paid insurances and all that stuff. So the whole idea never really occurred to me. How was it? What was that day going to look like? That I go from full-time employed by my company to full-time day trader. What was that day going to be like when I lost the security of my uh, businesses and all the insurances and the paychecks and all that. How was I, what, was I actually going to quit one day full-time professional contractor? Wake up the next morning as a full-time professional trader? What do you think? Is that how it works? It never occurred to me to ask. You know why? I never got past the first part of my plan. The very first part of my plan was learn to trade. A lot of you are stuck there. Learn to trade. You don't need to learn to trade to start a, a trading business. In fact, you need to start a trading business before you worry about anything about how to trade that's the easy part if you haven't figured that out yet the actual mechanics of trading is the easy part if you don't believe me come hang out in our trade room we have traders here Tom 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 how long have you been with us about a week not even you hung out in the trade room for about two weeks. And then you've been with us for less than a week. You signed on with the Einstein program. Is trading hard? Based on your experience. Is trading hard from what you've learned in the trade room, what we do? Okay. If you think it's hard, you need to come hang out with us. The trading part of what we do is the easiest part of what we do. Okay? And then we're going to have an extensive question and answer. And I'll stay as long as you want me to. Okay? And I'll answer all your questions.
All right. So if you came in late, that's just a reminder. You can watch that goofy liquor third. We filmed uh, an episode back in September, and uh, we just found out Friday night that it's on the schedule to be the first one to air after they come back from a hiatus. Uh, um, through February, they just show reruns because of the football, Super Bowl stuff and stuff like that. Um, but March 3rd, all right? So everybody mark your calendar and see what the day trader is doing on Shark Tank. All right, so we got some specials as we always do. We appreciate you guys coming. Uh, so Connor worked up some special pricing for you. You can go to, where the heck did the link go? I thought it was on the slide, but hold on a second. Here's the uh, link to the specials page. If you want to talk to us, if you have questions, uh, hit us up on the website. They're on every page on the website. There's a chat button. If you've got questions or you want some 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 special bundle or whatever, um, if you want to know more about the Einstein program, we will be doing a mailer on that as soon as the uh, the RX 2.0 is finished. We're going to send out a mailer on that, and then the price for Einstein will be going up because I'm going to add quite a bit of value. Those people that are already in the Einstein and P program, no worries, you've already paid. Once you're in, you're, it's a, Einstein is a one and done thing. You don't have to pay again for anything that uh, a program like this. Anything that we add to the trade room, you don't have to pay for. Any program that we add, you don't have to. There, there's never enough to sell. See you, Alex. All right, I actually got through this a good bit quicker. Now, that's because it was it's actually uh, about an hour and a half to an hour, 45-minute presentation. And I know you guys didn't want to sit through that, which is why we're doing this over two days. Today, I laid some groundwork for some of the really good stuff that's coming on Thursday, okay? So, you guys, if, if you found this remotely interesting, it's going to get even better on Thursday, all right? And of course, we're uh, we're around all your questions. All right, everybody, thanks for coming. And, uh, we'll see you on Thursday. Have a great evening.